Now, we're gonna go over installing the plate. Uh, obviously, the bell housing's already been removed. Um, we have a different video on doing that, but it's pretty simple. Um, you're gonna have all your 12 millimeter bolts, your eight by 125s. So, just go ahead and pull those off. As you can see, the uh, lower four come with a little bit of Loctite to help with sealing, so those will be a little bit harder to get out. Uh, me personally, I do not install the plate with any Loctite because the countersink bolts that are being used, uh, if you ever have to service and go back in there, they're already small within it itself. As you can see on the plates, we tell you to torque them down only 30 foot pounds. So you guys might be a little bit aggressive with applying the Loctite. And then when you got to pull the plate off, you end up stripping the heads out of the bolts and it causes a whole fiasco. Honestly, you, honestly in my opinion, you really don't need the Loctite back again on the lower bolts. Now, the plate will pop off. As you can see, the gasket is here. Some of you guys, uh, We'll see other videos where the guys don't use a gasket, they just silicone it, that's not what I do. I reuse a gasket and I honestly apply a thin layer of Permatex going all the way around. Not too much, a thin layer is more than enough to get the job done. And that's primarily gonna be on, I always make sure to do that on the side that will actually attach to the adapter plate. You don't have to do it on the transmission side. I do it on the side that attaches to the adapter plate. Now, this little spud, the way how we've machined the recess on our plate, you don't have to cut that, so don't even worry about that. That's, that's a non-issue. Um, some of you guys have seen where some guys are talking about cutting, the, uh, cutting the, the tip of the shaft down. Honestly, I don't do that either. Uh, you can realistically check when you look inside the crankshaft you'll notice it's either going to be completely cylindrical and square 90 degrees on the outer corner uh, if it's like that you won't really have an issue if it seems to be a little bit more rounded which is typical on a lot of the VVTI crankshafts then you can either tip it a little bit maybe about 316 quarter of an inch not a lot or you could also just put a really aggressive bevel going all the way around the tip and that'll also accomplish the, the job as well. Now, before we go ahead and install the plate, you'll notice that there is a seal right here. You are provided a seal with the kit, a brand new one, so you don't have to worry about monkeying with this one to try and get it out. Now, what I do with the seal is I actually use the pilot bushing. As you can see here, brand new seal that's supplied with your kit. What I do with the seal, the easiest way to install it, is I actually use the pilot bushing. You'll notice a lot of times when you get these, the seal is usually dropped in the upper plate up here, and then the pilot is usually inside the center. And you notice it's actually a pretty nice fit. So what I do before I install the pilot, I generally use the pilot to press in the seal. It's that simple. The seal comes up against the edge. We have a machine surface now that stops the seal from going in. And that's step one. So I'll get this cleaned off here and we'll go to the next step. Now the next step we're gonna go ahead now and install the adapter plate on here. Now, you can see this is a J3 plate. You can see it's a little bit thinner than what most of you guys might do because the J3 plate is uh, significantly deeper. So we machine a specific plate uh, for that. Um, no difference in the install other than the J3 when you do the bell housing, you'll actually have to notch to clearance uh, for the clutch lines if you're using the T56 slate. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and move the gasket. I've already applied a layer, as you can see, of silicone right on the back of the plate, and that will actually help to keep the gasket in place. Now, what I usually do is 
I get set up with my hardware, you'll see there's a bag that accompanies your kit, everything you need. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a couple of the longer, you're always going to get eight of the longer counter sinks. These are eight by 1.25 thread pitch. Uh, the J3s use 50 millimeter long and the J3 or the J1, J2 plates will use a 65 millimeter or actually no, a 70 millimeter long uh, unit. Uh, they both use two short 30 mils for the shorter bolts, obviously. Those are easy to figure out where they go. Uh, if you don't know, then I advise you to find somebody to do your plate install. So, these have the deeper recess pocket from a couple years ago that clear the shaft uh, so you don't have to worry about notching because there's a lot of misinformation going on stuff that's been fixed like two years ago uh, among different kids. So, we'll go ahead and drop this on. Uh, try to keep the, the plate centered just so you don't have to worry about touching the uh, lubrication that's on the seal. Uh, I'll drop this down. Start one bolt here. Drop that. And I'll start another one. It's best to go ahead and get all of them started before you start trying to tighten up any of them. Now, a little bit of noise you hear there, that's because of the Loctite. You can expect that at some point it might bind up. normal to get more resistance. Now we're going to go ahead. Obviously these are for the two short ones, the 30 mils. And that's the primary step. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and install the T56 because realistically you're, you have to install the T56 prior because you're going to run into an issue trying to set up the lines. So go ahead and get that installed which that's pretty simple we have the two bolts here and I'm gonna go grab a slave off the bench and I'll set that up all right now we're gonna go ahead and install the t56 uh, if you pur purchase one from us this would be the unit you're gonna get it's a standard GM t56 slave uh, your orientation is pretty simple uh, basically you're just getting it to where these go around there. There's a couple sets of holes, a little bit for you guys that want to do custom lines, but primarily just so that in case you guys ever break a bolt off, doing something ridiculous, that you still have a couple more that you can uh, use. It doesn't take a lot because it's only a six mil bolt. Now your T56 is ready to go. Now also the reason you're installing this first is because you're not gonna really be able to get it to go on if the bell housing is already bolted to the plate. Now, at this point, you go ahead, or right before this, uh, the torque specs are here for the adapter plate, which is 30 foot pounds on all of these countersinks. So you torque those down to 30, or 30 pounds, I should say, and then 40 foot pounds on the bell housing. The bell housing is gonna be the next install uh, step. Now, the J3, the bell housings, like I mentioned earlier, do have to be notched because you have less vertical height around here to offset the bell housing. So once the bell housing is down here, obviously it's going to want to interfere with these lines. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get those marked. I'll show you a picture and then I'll notch that out and then the bell housing will go up and we'll be pretty much ready to go. Now, the last step we're gonna go ahead and do now is gonna be installing the uh, bell housing. Now these are gonna be six bolts total you're gonna have two longer two longer ones that go into 
the lower bolt holes, you'll also notice that inside the bell housing, those areas are actually deeper up there, which is why they require the longer bolts. So I'm also going to show you how we notched it for the J3. If you can see, you have the notch here and here. Easiest way to do it, if you can't see right there, is to realistically just put the bell housing up towards the plate. And you'll see where the lines want to come through in the fittings. And just go ahead and uh, make a mark with a Sharpie there and there and go ahead and start notching, start grinding. But we'll go ahead and start these bolts now. In case you guys ever need replacements, these are going to be 10 by 1.5s. Or in case you ever screw up a hole, you need to clean it out with a tap. That's it, you're pretty much complete, ready to go. Um, the torque specs for these are engraved on the bottom of the plate, obviously with bell housing on and covers it, but that's it. Uh, it's pretty simple, straightforward. It shows you how to install the seal. Uh, set up with the slave, showed you how to notch the J3 bell housing. The notching is only required on the J3. Because obviously if you look, the J1, J2 plate is going to be significantly thicker and has enough vertical height here for you not to have to worry about notching anything. So notching is only applicable to the J3 bell housing.